In this video, we're going to learn about the size of row groups in Apache Parquet. Should they be big? Should they be small? Does it not make any difference? Welcome to Learn Data with Mark. Okay, so we've got some Parquet files here uh, that are split into different row group sizes. So we've got one that's got 10,000 records per row group, one with 100,000, one with a million, and one with 10 million. Let's now come over to our Python REPL and we're going to explore those files using DuckDB. So we'll import that and then we're going to create a in-memory database. Now we're going to import a function that I wrote earlier called run query. What this does is it takes in a query and a parquet file, a number of iterations. It runs that query for the file that you've passed in a certain number of times and then it computes a bunch of timing information about how long it took. So let's give it a try. So we're going to start with our first query, which is just going to do a basic count. So we're going to call that query um, for the 10k file. And so we'll give that, a, give that a little bit of time. So it's running 10 times, remember. And once it's finished, we can then print out the results. You can see we've got 10 million rows. And we can then also print out the timing information. So we can see here on average, it took 0 .0 0.1, 0 0.1 um, seconds per query. Let's now have a look at how we can do that for all the files. So we're going to create a parquet files variable that contains uh, all the files. Now let's run that query again. So we're going to iterate over the parquet files and we're going to run the query and capture the results in the all underscore results variable. Let's now print out the all results. And so we can see here we've got the results for running it on each of those files. It was quickest on 10 million, followed by 1 million, followed by 100k, and then you can kind of see that 10k is sort of an outlier at the top. But they're all they're all reasonably fast, right? It's not, <laughs> it's not like we're waiting around for too long. But why is there such a difference between them? And so perhaps one reason for that is the number of row groups that we are having to operate on. Um, so the way that it works out the answer to this query is, is we've, we've, the, the actual number of values in each row group is available as metadata, but the number of those that it has to count is different for each of the files. So let's write a query that uses the parquet metadata function, and we're going to get back the file name, and then we're going to count how many row groups uh, are having to be counted or summed together. And so if we run that query, you can kind of see we've got the, the 10k one's got 977, the 100k's uh, got 100, the 1 million's got 10, and the 10 million has only got 2. Let's now have a look at query number 2. So this one is going to average the wage um, for each of the rows in the file. And so let's now iterate over the parquet files. We'll run the query. Again, we're going to put the results into our all results variable. And when that comes back, we can now print out the result and so you can see the average wage across all the rows is 11,000 euros and let's also have a look at the timings and so you can see here we've got the fastest one is the the 1 million they're followed by the 100k followed by 10 million and followed by 10k and again 10k is taking uh, is taking a little bit longer than the other ones so let's figure out why this is uh, so we're going to go. We're going to run this query again, but we're going to run it 200 times, and then we're going to skip over to our other tab, and we're going to have a look at the H top output. So this is for the 10k one. So you can see the CPU is, is sort of maxing out at about uh, sort of 200 percent. Like it, it is using the cores, but it's not. It's not using absolutely uh, all the all the processing power uh, that we've got. And if we come come back, we can see it's uh, the 200 uh, iterations of this query have taken uh, 20, almost 28 seconds in total, and uh, average. Uh, time of 0.14 seconds. So that was the slowest one. Let's now have a look at the fastest one. So that was the 1 million. So let's run that 200 times and we'll come over to HTOP again. You can see this time everything is uh, is being used. All the CPUs are being used. Uh, we're at a CPU a percentage of about 500, 600%. So it's using, it's, it's, it's using um, lots of uh, lots of processing power and if we come back we can see that it was quite quick right it took three seconds in total uh, an average of 0.015 now the reason this is so fast is because we've kind of like got the number of cpus and the number of row groups are very very well aligned and so it's like there's there's, there's a bunch of work to do for each of those row groups and it's like one uh, one one core on core each so that's actually really really well aligned in this case let's have a look at the other two uh, just for completeness so this is the the 10 million so this time we remember we've only got two row groups so there's not going to be much parallelization here. If we come over um, to the H top tab, we can see it's it's, it's reaching sort of 100% CPU. Um, so it's not really uh, using uh, many of the cores. Uh, and if we come back, it's taken 14 seconds in total at an uh, average of 0.07. Uh, and finally, let's have a look at 100K. So if we come over to the H top, uh, we can see this time it's it's doing sort of 300, uh, almost 400% CPU. It's using a, a lot of the threads um, or a lot of the cores 
rather, uh, and this time it takes 5.5 um, seconds in total, at an average of 0.028. Now this one is is still is still pretty good, uh, not quite as good as one million, uh, and perhaps the reason for that is that we've got more uh, row groups than we've got uh, cores on the machine. So perhaps if we had a 64 uh, core machine, the 100K actually would have done better than the one million. It would be in an interesting experiment to try. Let's now have a look at one final query. So this time we're going to get it to uh, to do a bit of filtering. So we're going to find the the leagues and find the average value in euros and then the count uh, from each of those files where the date of birth is less than 1972 and it's not um, null effectively. And we'll order it by the average of the value. Uh, so that's the query. Now let's iterate through the Parquet files and we're going to call that query and again, uh, capture the results. Uh, and so if we run that, we see we get back of just a few leaks, right? So we get uh, the Syria B had the highest average value, then the Premiership, and then League Two and, and League One. And finally, if we look at the output of the timings, uh, we can see again, 100K and 1 million are winning. And this time 10K and, and, and 10 million are quite a, quite a lot, take, taking quite a lot uh, longer. So like four, four, five times longer than the other two. And so we could maybe explore a little bit why might that be the case. So we can write a query again using the Parquet metadata, but this time we're going to capture how many, like, because there's some filtering, it's going to be matching on the, the groups. And then we can count like how many, how many groups uh, would it have been looking through and how many values were there to process. And so we can see here actually for the 10K, it was able to, to filter quite a lot of the, the, those groups out. So it only would have had to look at just, just sort of over half of them. Um, whereas for the, the 10 million one, it's basically got to look at everything. Like there wasn't really any, any uh, there wasn't any, any help um, from the groups in that case. And then for the other ones, it's sort of, uh, sort of in between. And so for this particular data set, it looks like the sweet spot is maybe somewhere between 100K, 100K and 1 million or so, sort of in that range. Uh, but test it out on your own data sets and queries to compute the right size for you. And I'll see you in the next video.